Hi, this is Peter Brown, your instructor for Bio 108. I'll give a little lecture to go along with every PowerPoint. Uh, plants have been around on land for about 500 million years. Their ancestors came from the water. And until plants were on land, there was no reason really for animals to go onto the land. Plants provide food and shelter for animals. And this course will focus on how animals, including people, interact with plants. I'll try to start with a few learning objectives. If you skip these learning objective slides, uh, there's going to be a homework going along with the PowerPoints. And by doing the homework, you should uh, be able to answer the learning objectives. So this is a really great photo that I found on uh, Wikimedia Commons. And uh, it shows a guy doing topiary, making a shape out of a bush. So I think that's what really uh, intrigues us when we see plants is how they interact with humans and the largest organisms we see in our daily lives outside of animals are plants. Um, normally if we had an in-class lecture I'd have you doing exercises with other people. Uh, I've moved these exercises to the homework and whether I'll leave the slides into the PowerPoint or just take them out I'm not sure. But one exercise we'll have to do for the homework is to get you thinking about plants, list a dozen plants you've used in the past week. And then once you've listed them, try and organize them in uh, four other categories. I've started one for you here. And give me four categories of how you would use plants. So my example is, so for cosmetics, uh, there's mint and toothpaste. There's a whole bin shampoo. There's aloe and shaving cream. So besides plants, uh, it's fair to say you could list plant products. All right, same kind of thing. A little quiz to start you thinking about plants and people. Go through these four questions, answer true or false. And the next two slides are going to answer them for you. Be sure you know these. You'll see these same questions on your exam. Uh, here's a nice figure that gives the average American and it's from the U.S. Department of Agriculture and where our diet comes from. So this is a more recent uh, part of the figure, a bar graph from 2010. Uh, the green and yellow parts are from plants and they're broken down into different kinds of plant parts. And the uh, red and pinkish and salmon color are all either animals or animal products. And I've answered the other three questions here. Uh, for some of these, I'll expand on them on the homework. So here's one about cotton in the southern United States. And there's a little three minute video you'll do as part of your homework. OK, um, until about 1960, people threw fungi in with plants. If you were an animal trying to eat a fungi or a plant, how would mushrooms protect themselves? Okay, are mushrooms, could you just go in the woods and eat tons of mushrooms? How do plants protect themselves? Okay, do they have different strategies than animals do? Okay, why do you think scientists grouped plants and fungi together? Okay, in the 1960s, there was a scientist who looked at them and said, hey, you know, based on where they get their energy, they're very different. So think about where fungi get their energy from and where plants get their energy from. Uh, some of the areas studied by plant scientists, and we'll hit on uh, these areas in this course, are agriculture, uh, farmers growing crops for food, uh, economic botany, just the overall view of how people use plants, Ethnobotany, how traditional societies used plants. Uh, horticulture, there's a lot of overlap with agriculture, but usually when we talk about horticulture, we're talking about flowers, plants for the landscape, uh, plants for things other than food. Okay. Uh, paleobotany, so plants have been here for uh, 500 million years on Earth, on the land. And so uh, people want to study and see, well, what were the plants here during the time of the dinosaurs? So plant fossils is uh, an area. And then genetics, how 
parents pass on their traits to offspring. And most plants are able to sexually reproduce. And some plants will also reproduce without sex. Okay, life defies a one sentence explanation. And all living things are related. All living things originally came from bacteria. And here are bacteria that came from a deep sea vent. They live under the ocean. And this sort of defies our common idea that all food is made by plants. So on land, that's true. But here in the deep ocean, there's a process called chemosynthesis. And these are special bacteria that are able to build organic molecules or living molecules using the energy of heat from these volcanic vents in the ocean. So here are some characteristics of life. Even though we're alive and intuitively we recognize other organisms that are alive, there's no one simple definition of life. Instead, scientists say, well, here are some characteristics and these are characteristics that living things share. And most of these are things you're familiar with, although you may have not expressed them explicitly. So living things reproduce, whether they're a single cell or a multicellular organism. Think about giraffes having giraffe babies. Uh, living things respond to the environment. That's easy to see that if somebody came after you, you'd probably run away. It's harder to see for plants. But for example, if you planted a seed, whether it was upside down or right side up, the roots always going to grow down, the stems always going to grow up, and that's a response to the world around it. Uh, growth and development. So all organisms can get bigger and become specialized. So think about humans. We all start out as a single fertilized egg. That egg divides and divides and divides. Those cells become bigger and then they become specialized. They become nerve cells and skin cells and part of our digestive system and so on. Uh, energy processing. So all living things take in materials and energy from the world around them. They do it in a different way. So for example, plants take in energy from, um, from sunlight and we take in energy from the food we eat.